Uh, so when I was a teenager, I was the young kid that would follow the old blues guys around and ask them questions and get my picture taken with them and get their autographs and stuff like that and just generally be a pest to them, but they're pretty nice to me. And uh, It all started when uh, a friend of mine, his older brother, came in to uh, a friend's uh, teenage bedroom there and listening to, uh, we were listening to, I don't know, something like... Uh, Super Sessions album or something like that, and and uh, my friend's older brother, I'll never forget, he said, I hear you guys getting into this uh, Mike Bloomfield, and you're getting into this Peter Green and Eric Clapton, and and he goes, there's a guy you got to go see, because he's the one they're all getting it from. And uh, I said, well, who do we got to go see? Who is it that's a uh, big influence to our heroes? And I'll never forget, he said, uh, you got to go see B.B. King. Yeah. So it was at a time where B.B. King was playing week-long engagements at places, you know, the place where we saw him, uh, ended up seeing him, was a place like half the size of this, you know, and playing there for a week. Can you imagine going to see B.B. King every night for a week on a night where I was playing? <laughs> but uh, we went on a, on a Saturday afternoon to see B.B. King, you know, me and some of my friends. My dad took us there. We were too young to drive, uh, and uh, it was a teen show. You know what a teen show is? It's at a nightclub and they shut down the bar and they just serve uh, Coca-Colas and stuff like that. And uh, So we all went and uh, I mean, there's like 30 or 40 of us up in there here in B.B. King. And uh, of course, every time I tell the story, less and less people are in the audience. And told us I was the only one there. You know, but there was about 30 or 40 of us teenagers there watching Mr. King and it just blew us away. We'd never seen anything like that before. We could see where the you know, Cream and the Allman Brothers were coming from, but, uh, and then B.B. greeted us in the lobby and took his picture with us and talked to us for what seemed like, like hours, and he was just the nicest guy. So we got the idea that all the blues people must be really, really nice people. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and the next guy we all went to see was Howlin' Wolf. So he comes off the stage and just blew our minds. You know, we never seen anything like the real Chicago blues, you know. And uh, so he comes off the stage and he's standing about over there. And he had just done a show with, uh, he had Hubert Sullivan on guitar and, and the great Eddie Shaw on sax, who's still working today. And S.P. Leary was in the band. So, so Wolf comes off the stage, just drenched in sweat. And we're like, so I, I figured, you know, Mr. King was so nice. Mr. Wolf must be a really nice guy too. So I, I go over there and I'm, you know, like 15 years old or something, 1972, you do the math. And so um, I go over there to meet Mr. Wolf because Mr. King was so nice. And the closer I got to him, the bigger and the angrier he looked. So I just went and took a, a hard left and got a Coca-Cola. Never got to meet Alan Wolf. But that's a long build up for this song, but, um, Frankly, you're the only ones who'll listen. <laughs> so anyway, here's a song Wolf played that night. And I played it with Kim Wilson on the uh, Blues at the Crossroads tour. <laughs> Bring in the bar creep. Oh, oh, oh. 
drink. <laughs>